Let me begin by just saying that uh, we've kind of been preparing for this information, this moment, since last September, uh, and I pitched this idea to our leadership team back in October, and everybody was on board with moving forward, and I'm thankful that Blaine and Amy Adamson were gracious to jump on board and grab this vision for discipleship and run with it, and I know some of you have already had conversations with them and so I'm thankful to our leadership team for being open to new ideas, certainly a new idea for us here at Cedar, and uh, certainly, again, for the Adamsons and their help in preparing to launch this new initiative. In just a minute, Blaine is going to come up and share with you the high points of D groups, and the reason that we're sticking to the high points for this meeting is, number one, time. We don't want to take up too much of your time this afternoon, but also, secondarily, you are going to be reviewing all of the details involved in the groups within the first six weeks together as a group and so we don't want to spend all the time rehashing those things knowing that if you sign up for one uh, that uh, you'll be going through those same things again but we are going to hit the high points we're going to do a broad overview of what this new initiative is and of course we'll leave time at the end for you to ask any questions that you may have and so we're expecting questions we're hoping for questions and uh, if we don't have an answer uh, you'll just have to accept that we don't have an answer and we'll get back to you, okay? But uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer all of your questions. I want to begin briefly by discussing what we're aiming for. Now, when we think about a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, what are we aiming for? Well, you just heard, in an essence, a whole sermon about what it means to follow Jesus, the reason for it, the reward in it. But here's the thing. We don't really have metrics uh, to measure spiritual growth like we do metrics to measure numerical growth, right? So we, we see how many are in morning worship, we know how many are in Sunday school, and we can measure our numerical growth in that way. To measure the growth in our heart, that's a totally different thing, right? That's much more difficult for us to do. But we understand from the scripture that there are various activities that true disciples of Jesus Christ are involved in consistently. And so this is what we're aiming for. This is what we're shooting for. We're calling it, and we've borrowed this language, but we're calling it the marks, M-A-R-C-S, the marks of a true disciple. And so what are we looking for? First, in a disciple, we're looking for someone who is missional. A true disciple is regularly praying for and investing in relationships with those who do not have an active relationship with Jesus. And so as you think about D groups, no, as we enter this partnership, this covenant together, that's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for everyone to be involved, that you are going to be participating in an active relationship with someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ. Not only are we looking for a missional disciple, but we're also looking for an accountable disciple. A true disciple is consistently sharing with other believers about any and all struggles in their life. And I would say to you, this is, Blaine's going to talk about this a little more in a moment, but this is what is going to separate D groups, uh, maybe from a larger group gathering like Sunday school, or even maybe a larger group gathering like Wednesday night, is we are putting together smaller groups so that you can hold one another accountable and that you can share the sin and the struggles with your life with those few people in confidentiality, trusting that they're going to be praying for you, okay? And so we're, we're, we're getting serious here in that we want a disciple to be accountable to one another. Also, mark of a true disciple is that the disciple is reproducible. A true disciple is looking for opportunities to invest in other believers to help them grow in their faith. And so as we grow, we're investing in others to help them grow. Marks of a true disciple, fourth, they're communal. A true disciple is regularly engaging in meaningful community with other believers. Community involves not only the worship gatherings, but Sunday school, D groups, being in community outside of these walls, uh, in the community, and so forth. And so that's what we mean by communal. And then fifth and finally, we'll say a mark of a true disciple is scriptural. A true disciple is experiencing intimacy. That's what we spoke about this morning with Jesus through consistent reading, meditating, meditating, and obeying God's word. Now, you might be saying, Pastor, I'm not necessarily doing all of these things, and that's okay. The goal of D groups 
is for us to be moving toward this direction, okay? So that we're all participating and involved in the five marks of a true disciple. Now, if you've thought this is going to be hard, you're right. It is going to be hard. That would be a correct assumption. Paul says to us in 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, he says, Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. I give you this verse to back up what I just said. This is going to be difficult. It is going to be hard because Paul tells us that godliness, true discipleship, is something that we have to train at. It's something that we have to to work on. It's something that we have to strive at, meaning it's not easy and it requires our consistency and it requires our discipline. And I use that word because you ought to notice that the root word for discipleship is the same root word that we find in discipline. And so discipleship is discipline. So those are my prefatory marks. Now that we kind of know what we're shooting for, where we're heading, uh, Blaine is going to come up and talk more specifically about D groups. He's going to talk about how we're going to get there. All right. Thanks, Landon. Um, before I talk about D groups, <laughs> I want to kind of share a quick story with you guys um, about Amy and I. When we were in our early 30s, um, we deeply desired to be discipled. So much so that we began to just approach people in our church who we thought were godly, who maybe could mentor us. Um, we had been through years of church, uh, years of Sunday school and Bible studies, but we just felt like um, we needed to go deeper, that we needed to have that personal accountability. So what we did is we looked for those who were seasoned ahead of us, maybe 15 to 20 years uh, further their kids were leaving the house or maybe they were empty nesters that they could disciple us but what was interesting as we approached them they felt very timid they felt that they weren't really equipped and it wasn't that they weren't spiritually able to do it no they were pillars of the church it was just that they had no idea how do I really disciple someone and uh, we're hope I, well first let me say this you may be here today thinking the same thing that um, you may want to be discipled, but you don't even know how to ask how to get started with it, or you may want to disciple. You may be seasoned and have gone through that, the, the trials and the fires of life and ready to do it, but you don't know how to disciple. Well, discipleship groups, basically, uh, these D groups are the framework that Cedar Grove can use to disciple one another. So it's an exciting thing, but I want to emphasize as, as strong as I can that you know, the, the meeting that we do every week where we're under the preaching of God's word, Bible studies that we do on Wednesday, our Sunday schools in the morning here at church are the foundational things that we do. This is just a tool that kind of comes alongside those things that are already there. And that's what excited us so much when Landon came to leadership about this because we felt like it was a tool that not only our church needed, but really the churches in general is this concept of how do we really discipleship. No. So, okay, enough of that. Let's jump right in to what are the, are the components of discipleship. Laura, if you'll throw up the next slide. Okay, very good. Um, number one is Bible engagement. Now, if I was going to change that word, it would just be wrestling through the word. Because one thing that's neat about this program is there's no book that you have to read through. It's just the Bible. It's basically chapter by chapter going through the word of God and what we do is when we're alone not when we're actually meeting but throughout the week we answer four questions and we try to apply those questions to our life then we meet together once a week and we just wrestle through those things so it's just a bible based program which is what I really liked um, the second thing is scripture memory now this isn't just showing up and regurgitating a scripture right that's kind of easy this is we're, we're called to meditate, right, on these things. Um, 
and that's what we do throughout the week. We say, okay, Lord, this is the scripture we're memorizing. This is how we're applying that scripture. And then we're coming to the meeting and discussing those things of how we applied it in our life. Second one is accountability, and Landon touched on this quickly, but this is the tough one because our hope, our goal is that we are intentional in our homes, that we're intentional at work, um, and in order to do this, we need accountability because all of us want to do those things, but a lot of times, time just flies by, right, and we forget these things, and a week becomes a month, month becomes a year, and we're like, how do we miss it? Well, this accountability helps us on that second thing it does is, is it gets sin out on the table that's in our lives things that we really don't want people to know about and we deal with those things so uh, heavy accountability something that that we need last is prayer and I I think any ministry we always talk about how prayer is going to be there this is a deeper dive in prayer there's actually a set time each week where we will pray over each person we'll pray over one another so it's not just a general, hey, we'll pray at home. It's a time where we pray for each other. So um, those are kind of the four components of um, the D groups. Um, next, let me just define, if you go to the next slide, define what a D group is. If I was going to define it, it's a group of three to five members that meets for a season of training and accountability with the goal of multiplying into other groups. Now, you'll see it's just three to five members. So um, that includes the leader. So it is very intimate. Um, and it talks about a season. This season could be up to a year that we would meet, even longer if the group would want to continue to do that. But that's kind of the commitment that you're looking at. Um, these groups are gender specific. Now, you can understand why that is when you deal with sin issues and accountability. Uh, some things can be uncomfortable and maybe what we would consider a normal life group or community group um, also these are closed groups uh, and what that means is this is really how you differentiate a d group from a small group a small group is something again that's more community driven people kind of come in and out and that's okay but with the d group if we're going to have true accountability where we're discussing intimate things about sin and other issues you really need to be able to have a strong level of trust of the people in that group so the, the groups would be closed. These groups will meet for 60 to 90 minutes uh, once a week. Um, now the where of it is really wherever you wanna meet. Uh, I know there's some groups that I've heard of that met at Chick-fil-A. How you can discuss these things at Chick-fil-A, I have no idea, but they do it. Um, some people meet at churches, some people meet in the home. I am a big fan of, of meeting in the home. I feel like if you can get to a place in the home where there's some privacy, um, that's really the best place to do it. Um, so those are the first parts of it. Let's hit the next slide, and it's what, to ex what do we expect of those who join these groups? What are the expectations? And I don't like reading through things a lot, but I'll go ahead and read through these. I think we need to hit on each one of them. But during the duration of the group, I will do my best to give myself fully to the Lord during this time as I anticipate a season of accelerated spiritual transformation. It's a lot of words. But basically how I would explain that is just you are leaning into this. You are fully giving yourself to this and by faith trusting that God is gonna do something amazing in your life. That's your demeanor as you walk into this. Next is commit to this group and consider how I may best spur others on in their relationship with Jesus. And I would say that, obviously, that's an encouragement, right? But understand, again, the difference between the small group and the D group is that this isn't a social thing. This is more of a accountable diving deep with Jesus. So you're going to be with people maybe that you are, don't know socially um, as these groups come out. Next is meet weekly with my discipleship group. We already went over that. Commit to the four weekly disciplines. We've gone over that also. Uh, contribute to a group atmosphere of confidentiality, honesty, and transparency. This is a big one. Again, as we talked about accountability, in order for a small group to work, not a small group, a D group to work, you've got to have trust. You've got to know that what's said in the group stays in the group. So your mindset has to be that, hey, whatever we share here stays here. Um, the next one is uh, pray every week for other members of the discipleship group. We hit on that already. Pray and look for other believers in my life who I can invite into a discipleship group 
when my current group decides to multiply. So here's the hope, is that as we go through this, and as you're discipled, that we multiply. And at some point, whether it be that year, or, or it could be before that, it could be after, we would basically hope that each member would begin to start their own D group. Um, next, we will pray and look for someone in our circle of influence who is unsaved to minister to. Another exciting part to me, because um, like I said, we all desire to share the gospel. We all desire to uh, reach out to people in our circle of influence, but we forget. But I think this accountability and asking questions about, hey, how did it go this week? Did you get to talk to Fred or Susie or whoever? Um, that type of accountability will really help as we pray for those people. Um, okay, so that ends that part. Um, the next part is kind of more difficult. Um, and I'm saying this as loving as I can say it, okay? Um, I am not here today, guys, to sell you on being a part of a discipleship group. Probably further from, from, us, from it, honestly. Um, I've been a part of groups at other churches that launched, and they had more of a seeker-sensitive kind of mentality that just all come. If you feel like you want to join, just jump right in. Um, but what I've seen is they make decisions on a motion, and just as quick as they sign up, within three to six months, they exit out. And one example was a church where we watched them roll this out, and they started with 20 groups, and after the first year, it was down to two. So what I'm calling you to do today is to weigh the cost, to really look at the season of life that you're in and really decide, is this something for me? So who is this for? Who this is for is someone kind of like Amy and I years ago in our 30s when our desire, we felt the Holy Spirit was just driving us to discipleship. We knew this is what we had to do. If you're there, this is for you. It could be for the person who is like, wow, this looks way too hard, right? I can look up there and at those four things and I could do the first three, but that last one on prayer, I just don't know. But in their heart, they're saying, I don't care. I know this is going to be hard, but I'm still going to do it because I know the Holy Spirit has been working on me. This is 100% for you. This is for you. Now, again, I mentioned seasons of our life. I'll give this as an example. Let's say that you've got kids and they're in sports and you're traveling all over the state right now. Probably not the right season for you to do this. Um, let's say that you're starting a new position and you're hearing that you're going to be flying all over the country. You're not really sure what that's going to look like. Probably not the season for you. Now, we look in this for commitment, and this is what we realize there's people are going to get sick and, you know, people take vacations. But our hope is that even though occasionally there's going to be these opportunities to miss, that we want you to be at every meeting you can be at. And then even if you're gone, try to zoom in. Um, we've had groups. I know when we were in uh, Italy, I think about our, um, when we were looking for our pastor, we all made a commitment in, our, our, in the pastor search committee to be at every group, and we would zoom in, and we were in Italy, and we were zooming into our meeting. So the intensity and the commitment to this group is that, hey, you're going to be there, okay? Um, but I'll give, uh, I don't want you to feel like, though, if you're missing out on this launch, that you're missing out, because we're launching now, but we're also going to do another launch in August. So it's all about praying to God right now and saying, Lord, where am I at with this? If it just seems hard for me to do, but I know you're calling me to do it, step out in faith and do it. But if you're kind of like, ah, this is just sounds like a kind of cool idea, maybe not the right time to do it, guys. Really pray, seek the Lord, let the Holy Spirit drive you to this. Because we're excited for all those who are excited to be a part of it. Okay, so let me go over some dates real quick. Um, Sunday the 28th, that's two weeks from today, is the last day to sign up, so it'll close after that day. Um, February 12th, you'll be contacted by your group leader if you did sign up um, on when you're going to be meeting, and then February the 25th is the first week of the group's meeting. And also, right there on the the I don't know what you want to call that little table. There's a, some info sheet with where you're going to sign up 
uh, online and then also all the dates that I just went over. But I know there's the D group, um, what do you call that fancy square? QR code. QR code, there you go. And then I just have the website address where you go to sign up for. So, uh, but we're excited about this. We're excited about this ministry. But again, weigh the cost. See if this is a time where you're ready to make this commitment. And we're definitely excited. I know the group leaders are excited uh, to have those step up who are ready to step up. Okay, the next step of this is questions. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to have a bunch of questions. So let them roll. Because I'm sure I missed something. This was Jonathan up here. I, we laughed about that. He'd have this on a spreadsheet and <laughs> eight different ways. So I'm sure I missed some things. Yes. Yep. What's going to happen is as you come in, um, go ahead, babe. Prayerfully, yeah. When we get the names, Amy and I will be praying over the names, and I'm sure Landon will too. We'll all get together and basically decide then. All right, go ahead, Mac. There it is. Uh, it could be a combination. Uh, I know a discipleship group I was a part of. This would be my example. Uh, there was a guy in there who was, gosh, 25 years older than me. And I tell you what, it was one of the best things I'd ever been a part of. Um, so it's a mix of ages. Yes, we do. We do have leaders picked out. Anything else, guys? Are you sure? Go ahead. We don't know yet. Okay. We've got extra leaders that we've kind of in the batter's box, so to speak, in case more people sign up than is expected. Um, so we're not sure. It, yeah, right now we don't. We have zero in terms of how many have signed up. So it's basically you, we've got leaders waiting depending on how many people sign up for this. Yes, we, well, here's what I'll say to that. We've got a couple leaders who are younger who I've positioned to help out with younger people that would come in because I definitely feel like um, we need to have that option open if they enough people sign up for that. Um, because I feel like in a high school group, it may be better to pair them by age. But again, I'll be very prayerful about that decision and how we would divide that up. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Any questions that you have? I think Mac and I met at Waffle House several times. Uh, over the years for our many discipleships. Anything else? Go, on, go ahead, Cindy. Are you saying if you're a leader? Yes. We're actually going to have a training in a couple weeks with all the leaders to go over that. Uh, and so um, you're given some information and some training on how to lead. But in terms of the Bible ship curriculum, um, it's really just going through the word together. And so we've hopefully picked out leaders who we feel like are ready to do that. Does that make sense? Going once. Nobody else? Okay. All right. Do you have anything else to add, Landon? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we look forward to whoever is interested signing up. And uh, like I said, we'll connect with you guys. And again, grab a piece of paper on your way out. And my email address is on Blaine. I mean, it's Blaine. It's our email address is on there. And also our phone numbers to where you can reach out to us afterwards with any questions you may have. Maybe you felt uncomfortable asking here. 
So fire away. We're here to help in any way. Let me pray for us, and then we'll, we'll go.